Camera backpacks are an essential piece of gear, especially if you do anything remote, and I do a lot of that stuff, so I need a backpack that really delivers in hardcore situations. And I think this new one from Low Pro might just be the one for a lot of my needs, and today I'm gonna be breaking down why I think that is. So get comfortable because this might be a long video. So this backpack is the 45 liter Photosport X from Low Pro. It comes in a 35 liter version as well, but 45 is just more usable. And this thing is marketed towards mountaineers, people who shoot rock climbing assignments, backcountry skiing assignments, pretty much a lot of the stuff that I do. So I thought it was super suited towards me. And so that's why I'm stoked to check it out. So this backpack has a lot of features. And so I wanna start off just with what I like, and then we'll get into the things I don't like quite as much. So starting off in terms of materials, I think they did a really good job here, making it feel a bit more durable than their other backpacks and so the exterior materials on this backpack just feel super sturdy like they're not going to rip really easily and they even seem pretty water resistant even though I don't think they're technically waterproof they have a little bit more resistance to snow and things like that so that's just really great to have on the outside of your backpack especially if you have fancy camera gear inside. Another thing that I really like is that they kind of simplified the bag for usability in extreme environments and so there's not a lot of compartments that are unnecessary or additive that you have to get into with lots of zippers and stuff so basically it's just one main open area in the top where you can just stick all your gear in and that's pretty much it so you don't have to worry about getting into lots of little zippered pockets but in terms of zippers one thing that they did add which is always great is a rear entry to the backpack so you have those nice zippers that open up you can flap it open and get to your camera gear or just other essentials like clothing and it's really easy to access this backpack also really emphasizes adjustability. So this entire back area, as you can see here, opens up and you can adjust it between different height levels. So if you're short, you can keep it at the bottom. If you're really tall like me, you can put it at the top. And this is great for someone like me who is six foot tall and usually has backpacks that don't fit my torso correctly, just lengthwise. So having that adjustability is fantastic. That being said, it probably does add a little bit of weight to the backpack, but I think it's worth it. Another thing I think is great are the attachment points. So rather than adding a lot of zippered compartments, they basically put spots on the outside where you can attach things. So you have these straps right here for like a helmet it. You have lots of daisy chains on the side to just carabiner things too. One thing I really like about this backpack is that there are two water bottle spots. So you have on this side a vertical one for like a tripod like I have here and then on the other side there's a horizontal slot for another water bottle. So a lot of the time they just put one in and it's really annoying because you gotta stay hydrated out there, you know? I can tell with this backpack, they really did try to make it oriented towards the outdoor adventure because like I said, the mounting points are great, but also the accessibility to add larger items. So there's great ice axe carry on the back. You can easily add some trekking poles in there. Ropes go over the top of the backpack perfectly. It's actually designed for it with this quick latch mechanism to basically hold your climbing rope in there. And then ski carry on the sides is flawless. Like the straps fit in perfectly, fits really well, carries really nicely. And I just really appreciate having a backpack that is oriented for those outdoor adventure sports not just photography. There are a couple more slots on the bag. So in the front, you just have a compartment here that you can stuff in like a wet jacket. It has a drain hole on the bottom. And then on the side here, there's actually one more zippered pocket that I think they say is for crampons or something like that. Any other wet item that's sharp and pokey goes down there. It's a little more durable. And I think that's what it's for. But of course you can pop it open, make the compartment bigger and just ignore that. And thankfully your Peak Design Quick Carry can fit on here. It's a little bit tricky because the strap is quite wide, but you can squeeze it on and it works. Currently walking through Joshua Tree, got this pack pretty loaded up, camera on the Peak Design Quick Release and then lots of stuff in the back there. And feels great, really, really comfortable, um, good weight distribution. Only thing is the ventilation isn't the best, but with open zip backs, so you can't really have that. So again, I think it's the perfect size of carry. Like you can fit a day's worth of stuff easily and have tons of room for camera gear and snacks and all that good stuff. So yeah, I'm stoked on it. But now I wanna shift to some of the things I don't love about this backpack. And unfortunately, they're pretty much all centered around the camera aspect of it. And that's too bad because it's labeled as a camera backpack. Pretty much all these negatives on the camera stuff revolve around the camera carry system. And so a little bit of background, basically Lowepro has these different camera cubes, essentially a large, extra large, and extra, extra large. And the point of them is basically just to store your camera gear in different sizes so you can fit into your backpack and attach it and connect it. The first problem is that it doesn't come with the backpack. These cubes are actually an additional cost. I think they start at like $50 and they're just little padded cases with some dividers, like nothing special at all. But number two, the biggest problem is 
the connector system that they tried to put in this bag. Like they created this new system and it is, I don't even have words for how atrocious it is actually. Like the person who designed this should probably just be fired. It's it's unbelievably bad. It uses this kind of latch system that's super convoluted. You have to fit it through these tiny little straps, connect it together, feed it back through the camera cube. And even then when you get everything lined up as it should be, it's still super loose, doesn't feel sturdy. And when you start to shove things into your backpack like clothing, it just completely bends and contorts that camera cube. And so any gear inside would be possibly compromised by the pressure. And it's just not good at all. It's so sad because I love everything else about this backpack besides the camera part, but I'm reviewing it as a camera backpack. And so because of that, it's just, it's tough. One of my other low pro backpacks is the powder and it's suited towards backcountry skiing, but it has this really nice size camera cube that feels pretty sturdy and fits perfectly into the backpack. You don't even need to secure it to anything. It just slots in beautifully and it's separated from other gear. And so it's not gonna get squished or damaged around. And this one, I just can't trust to the same level but that being said there are some alternatives you can use for example I found instead of using their weird convoluted connector system if I just use some carabiners and clipped it to the spots you're supposed to and put the cube in it stays a lot more sturdy and then also if you just use the cube independently like put your camera gear inside of it but don't attach it where you're supposed to you can set it on top of your bag wherever feels safer and I think it has a better opportunity of carrying your stuff better like basically any backpack can be a camera backpack if you have a cube or way to secure your gear safely um, but really what you're looking for is that integration and it's kind of a miss in my opinion on this bag but the other truth of the matter is that when I'm doing outdoor adventure things like skiing or climbing my camera gear usually is pretty small in scale and a lot of the time I don't even keep any of it in my backpack so when I'm actually doing these adventures, it's gonna be clipped to the outside of my bag or harness or somewhere like that. And so it's not as big of an issue as you might think that the accessibility and gear storage inside isn't perfect because there are alternatives in especially outdoor environments, but yeah. I just wished it was a little bit better. And another thing that really annoys me is that that quick clip system that they try to use for the camera cube, they also use on the hip belt here, which is essential. And basically it's so you can adjust it, I guess, or remove this little bit here, but it comes undone and it just like falls out and then you don't have a hip belt and it literally just fell out on me before I was filming this video. And that's not ideal. Like you need that stuff to stay put. They thought it was a great idea to innovate and make a new snap connector system. Horrible. Worst, probably the worst product design thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So despite that sounding pretty negative, I still think this is a great backpack. And actually, I think it's worth your money in a lot of ways just because of how versatile it is. Like, I think it's going to replace my low pro powder in a lot of situations just because it's a little bit smaller, better for travel, and can accommodate a lot of different sports rather than just one. So I think that's a great feature of it. I think it makes it worth the price. And even though the camera aspect is isn't perfect you can work around it and you can make it work and there's still other features on this backpack that are tailored towards films I think this backpack's gonna be great I'm excited to use it for touring season I'm excited to take it up some more climbs and just adventure with it more because it is quite comfortable it fits a lot of stuff like 45 liters pretty perfect you can almost squeeze in a night trip with that and in terms of price, the 45 liter version is $330. Not the cheapest, but not the most expensive by any means. And I really think this backpack has the potential to last for quite a while. And yeah, maybe worth an investment. So check it out, link below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.